So welcome to another video and it's lovely to see all of your beautiful smiling faces and who wouldn't be smiling on a day like this? It's absolutely gorgeous outside. I've been out there today, I've got the sieve out that's been in the plastic shed in the garden for about five months. A little bit of mould on it so I've managed to inflate it, give it a good hose down, give it a good scrub with a brush. Me and James are out there working on it um, and stood it up and got it all nice and dried off in the sunshine and that's put away now ready to be used over the next couple of weeks I reckon. Hopefully if we get any more days like today I'll be out there. I've also been down the shed. September I bought that little Honda engine and I put it in the shed and I haven't touched it since. Went out there today, undone the stuff I had to undo to get it to start because I'm not that much of an expert when it comes to outboard engines and after about three or four pulls I've got it running. Um, so that's, um, that's promising. I'm going to check the oil on it during the week and have a look at the fuel level, get myself some fuel in a little can so that's all ready to go. So shouldn't be too long now. Um, the reason for the video is that I've got um, probably the rest of the kit that I need to do the T-Move challenge, the T-Move videos. I'm going to go out and try and catch stuff completely on stuff that I bought from Timu, And we're talking like nothing costs more than a couple of quid apart from the reels and even they didn't cost a tenner a piece. Um, so I'm going to show you all this kit. In the meantime, while I'm sorting it out, have a look at this little bit of footage. I did go fishing last week with the dangler. We went over to Leon Solent. It was a bit windy, so we went to Leon Solent to get out of the weather. Um, we caught some dogfish um, and had a fairly pleasant session. So have a little look at this footage and then when you come back, I'll show you what we've got here. You'll never guess what. I'm out fishing again. Went to Southbourne last night. And tonight, conditions are okay, you know. The wind's a little bit weird. It was sort of coming in from the shore, from the left. Um, and my usual haunt, sort of east and that, would have been right in the face, would have been horrible. Sort of 15 to 18 mile an hour winds and quite chilly as well. So looking at the map, decided to have a go at Leon Solent with the dangler. So here we are, we're over here. I tied. I think it was about half an hour ago. So it's gonna start flooding any minute. I'm, sorry, low tide it was about uh, about five o'clock. And I think it's about six now. So any minute it's gonna start flooding. And I think high tide is about midnight tonight, maybe a little bit after midnight. Can't stay till midnight because I've got work tomorrow morning. But we can get a decent session in. And again, I think, I'm pretty sure, I've definitely fished up the lifeboat station before with Mark in the past, a few years ago. I don't think I've ever fished here. Apologies if you're getting a bit of noise. The wind is hitting the, broad, the shelter and it's um, a bit noisy. But yeah, I've got two rods out. Um, bag the bars with uh, panels, sand deal and squid. Fishing for a raise again. Um, Going to get a bycatch of dogfish, obviously. But um, it is a spot that produces the odd thorn back, so as that one's next on my hit list, I thought I'd have a little go for them. Lovely little spot. Car's not too far away. £1.70 for the last hour's parking, something like that. Um, two hours. £1.70 for two hours parking. And because uh, my trolley is uh, in repair at the moment. I've realised that this little back rest that I've got on the box doubles up as a rucksack and I thought at the time I thought well I'm never going to use it as a rucksack because I'm too old and frail to be carrying that round on my back, it's heavy. But last night I had to use it and it was alright. So today I've sort of downscaled the tackle a little bit um, and I've taken out a lot of my plane leads because down here I'm not going to use plane leads, I'm going to be using grippers. And I've got four five ounce and four six ounce. That's all I've got in the box, which covers what I need for tonight. And then I'll probably sort that out on a session by session basis. And then that way, it's never going to be too hectic. So, it might even be the new way forward, unless I'm going somewhere where there's a bit of a trudge and then I'll shove it on the trolley and then wheel it along. But it really wasn't too bad. So, um, enough waffle from me. Um, I'm just going to show you where we are and I'm going to watch these rod tips and hopefully we can catch fish. It's 
So we've managed to avoid the blank. I've wound the first two rods in with sandal and squid on. And the second one of the two has had this very wiry dogfish. And thankfully he's taken the pen hook and it's just in the corner of his mouth so I'll be able to get that out easily. But I've got the rods back out again now. I just popped him in a bucket of water while I've got the rods back out. And I'm on bluey and squid now. So, yeah. We don't want a dog fest, but after last night being quiet for quite a long period, quite happy to have a fish on the bank. So yeah, happy days. So first cast, we've wound ourselves in a lesser spotted nurse hound shark, or a dogfish to you and me. So second casts are out now, and we've got bluey and squid on these ones. Lovely head end of the bluey, and I went just beyond the gills, and the amount of, oh, this thing's gonna get on my nerves, sorry. I apologise. I had the I had the motion sensor. It's not good. Um, yeah, so I, I, I had the blue ear sections. I used the head end and I cut just behind the gills. And the amount of blood that just come out of them all over my hands, fantastic. But the idea there is not to have it hanging up too long, ready to go, because it's just dripping on the beach. You want to be baiting that up like minutes before you're going to be winding in. If possible, if you don't mind doing it, wind in, get the rig off, and then bait up, get it on and get it straight in the sea. Because as soon as that goes in the sea, the sooner that blood's gonna be leaking and, and doing all good stuff. So um, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's your bluey, the bloody bit. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Um, wind's picked up a little bit, but it's still not too bad. Shout was doing its job. And because of where we we had a good look at the map, we've been to another spot first and it was a bit too windy. We've come around here, a little bit more of a sheltered bay with a bank behind us and it's a lot more comfortable. So um, yeah, we've gone for comfort tonight. Hopefully we're gonna get some fish as well. He's had a dogfish and I've had a dogfish. So um, one to the dangler and one to me. Um, so yeah, there's fish out there. That's the main thing. Just gonna watch these rod tips and um, hope and pray. So we're a couple of hours in now, we're having a lovely social to be fair, but um, the doggies keep coming. I think it's a couple each we've had now. Uh, again that one's taken the top panel, so that's going to shake off nice and easily, so no deep hooking, which pleases me. I hate it when they take both hooks right down and I've got to start doing operations and surgery, but um, yeah it's going to be an easy one, it's going to be a little shake off with a T-bar. So. We're happy with that. And what I did notice, um, winding in the last rod, I was getting snagged quite a bit. And that Dan pointed out, because I'm fishing the bagnell bar with a flow and trace behind it, the hook is bouncing along the bottom and getting caught. And the hook point was completely dinked. So he, um, he come up with a good idea and said, like, maybe a, a pulley, so the hook isn't directly on the bottom, but hanging up above the lead. Might be a better option in this sort of situation because there is quite a bit of uh, rough ground shall we say um, so yeah that's what I've done now I've put one of them out with a, a pulley and a dongle on um, and when the other rod comes in I'll probably do the same there maybe a dongle maybe a panel um, maybe one of each and then just see how they go but yeah dogfish we're catching fish so I looked up and the rod was bouncing and then flicked back and went completely slack so I got ever so excited But it was just one of these. That's three now. Three dogfish. And when I came out, I said to myself, if I could catch three dogfish tonight, that would be an amazing session. So, target achieved. Happy days. So, having a nice little social tonight. It's lovely to be out fishing with Dan again. The fishing's okay as well, catching a few dogfish. He's had a couple of white in as well. But um, the dogfish haven't been deep hooked, which is a really good thing. I was fishing a session with him, I think it might have been Hailing Island. And every one took both of the panel hooks all the way down and I just had to perform surgery on each one and it was just a nightmare. But um, no, not, not so much today. I've managed to get them all out with a T-bar, just, just bounce them off. So um, that's been good. I did, the last one did have a bit of a... I pull over and it flicked back slack. I got all excited thinking it was a ray. And it was another dogfish. Pretending to be a ray, obviously. But yeah, not much to film tonight, to be fair. Um, 
the odd dogfish and a little bit of me telling you that I've just caught a dogfish so not that exciting unfortunately hopefully something exciting comes along in a minute um, but it's just one of them midweek trips nothing on telly get out on the beach chuck some sandals out and see if you can catch a ray or something you know but um, something worthwhile but, uh, but we keep going we keep persevering um, what is the time the time now 20 past 9 I'm not having a late one because I've got work in the morning I've got to be up and I've got to be in the office I've got to be up at 6 o'clock in the morning um, so I want to be home and I want to be in bed with everything sorted by midnight so I want to be leaving here at about half 10 at the latest really um, and there is a kebab shop literally I can smell it that's how close it is um, so I am quite keen to grab a kebab on the way home. Is that bad? It's not bad, is it? I haven't had a kebab for such a long time. And um, it appeals. There's a kebab shop next to an Indian restaurant and the smells that are coming with the wind as well. <laughs> Deadly. So when does it actually become a dog fest? Not sure, but I think it's getting close to being a dog fest. Hmm. So I think that's about it, really. I've got two rods out, and that's going to be the last cast on them. I'm just going to fish them out, and then I'm going to wind them in, pack them up, and do the off ski. Uh, it's 10 o'clock now anyway, so I've got to start fishing about half five, so four and a half hours. Um, and it's been fun. We've had a good social, me and Dan. Caught some dogs, I think we've had five or six dogs. So it's been, it's been a prolific session. Um, it's just dogfish again, and there seems to be loads of them everywhere you go. But um, that's just fishing, you know, you've got to wade through them to get to the better quality fish. But I can't complain. Oh, excuse me. Ugh. I can't complain. It's, um, I've been very, very fortunate with the fish that I've been catching. Um, so, yeah, I can't moan about that. But I am going to do some different things soon. Um, I'm waiting for the weather to start warming up a little bit more when the mullet starts showing I'm going to start doing some mullet spinning I'm going to do some fishing for bass, I'm going to do a little bit of fishing on the sib I'm going to get out stalking for carp um, the kids want to come out and do some fishing with me so I've got loads and loads of plans um, also I want to get down sort of Brighton way and have a go for the flatties for the place so that's going to be another session on the cards coming up in the next week or two um, so yeah that's about it from me like I say, wind these in, get packed away, get back to the car get home, got work in the morning so I don't want to be out too late, otherwise I'm going to be knackered tomorrow and I'm going to be sorry. So, um, not a very good video, unfortunately, so I do apologise. It's just been, is a dogfish, and then the next shot's been, oh, I caught that dogfish. So, um, yeah, not very exciting at all, but see if we can get some more exciting stuff in the next video. Thanks for watching, Tight Lines. Cheers, guys. So, yeah, it was a, an enjoyable session with the dangler. But um, just dogfish, and we were really, really hoping for a form back raid, but we'll have another go. So, what have we got in our bag this time? We've got, bearing in mind we've got the rods and the reels and the braid and the gloves and the hat. I think that's about it, what we've got there. Um, we have got some fluorocarbon. I've got 100 metres of nine and a half pound fluorocarbon low memory low stretch fast casting it casts fast so that's that because we've got braid we're going to need fluorocarbon leaders because this is all going to be about lure fish in this kit um, because i can't get ragworm from timu so um yeah so the plan is to fish for mullet with mullet spinners and bass with top water lures. Um, so I've got some scissors. Now these are braid scissors. Um, so they're going to be good for snipping stuff. Obviously. This is a bag. This is a bag. Okay. So I ordered a bag for me to put the rod, the reel and all the kit in. Look an action man bag. Oh hang on. Oh hang on. Okay.
Oh, it's pretty small. How do you get stuff in it? It gets upside down. Yes, it was always upside down. Okay, so that unzips there. And we can put a reel in there, some lines, some scissors, some lures, and new rod. Fair enough. Okay, so we've got the bag. We've also got possibly the sexiest sunglasses I've ever seen. Now we had to make this good, didn't we? We had to make it good. So I had to get... Proper pair of sunglasses. Complete with sheath. Oh no, that's the sheath there. Sunglasses. Um, right. Now, down to the nitty gritty. Here, we've got MEP spinners. But they're not MEP spinners, obviously, because it's Timu. So we've got Timu copy MEP spinners. Number four, so that's going to be like nine grams, right? And I'm going to dock to these and put flowing traces on about eight inches with some hooks. And I managed to get from Timu owner fishing hooks. Now they're like carpy type hooks. But I've got fours, sixes and twos. And the twos are probably going to be too big, but the fours and the sixes are going to be great for doing the old panel on an eight inch section of fluorocarbon behind a MEP spinner with ragworm baited for mullet. And I've got three of these lures, three different sizes, three different weights. I think two silver, one gold. Um, probably going to keep their little plastic boxes to put them in and take them out of these sleeves, but let's have a little look at one of them. Whew. Sharp hooks, but I'm going to be taking them off anyway. But yeah, there are there are copy of a map spinner with some with a cat and some Chinese writing. Number three, that's a number three, and that's a number four. So I think that's something like seven grams and nine grams. So that's um for the mullet fishing. And then I've got these. Bearing in mind these were like 250. But I reckon That could catch me a bass. Top water laws. We've got one. And we've got two. Got a bit of feverage on that back hook there. But that's um I've had a go at top water fishing for bass, it's not the easiest thing in the world. I think I had like half a dozen sessions last summer, early in the morning, like four o'clock in the morning, just as the tide was rising. Lovely time of day, on a beautiful morning to be out on the shore on the rising tide, chucking this out and watching bass strike. I managed to land one, hooked a few, but managed to land one in about four or five sessions. So it's not the easiest thing in the world, but it's fun. And the lures that I was using weren't dissimilar to these, which is why I chose these ones. This one's got a bit of pink in it, pink and silver, and this one's like a pearlescent white, and I think those two will probably stand me in good stead. We'll give it a go anyway. We've got the rod, the reel, the braid, the lures, the kit, the hat. It's all there now. So I think what I need to do is I need to spool up the reels, or at least one reel, um, spool up a reel, get some line on it, get a thing in the bag, get it in the car, and then <clears throat> we're ready to go bass fishing. Um, and if I can get some ragworm, I only need a quarter of a pound of ragworm. It's not as if I'm going to be getting through loads of bait doing that. 
<coughs> and then we can um, have a go at the spinning of a mullet as well. But I think I need to do a few recce trips down to the creek just to make sure that the mullet are actually there at low tide. Because um, obviously we've just come out of winter. So um, they might be a bit few and far between down there. But as soon as they start showing in numbers, I've been down there before spinning for bass with just a lure. And I've had mullet chase and follow. And I think having a little bit of baited ragworm on the back of it is the missing piece for them to actually go and snatch it. But um, we're going to give that a go this season. And we've got the kit to do it now for the Timu Challenge. So that's about it for the video. Not a long one. A um, little bit of fishing, a little bit of kit, um, but yeah, exciting, exciting times. Um, I've got a couple of days now with Jessica, because it's, um, it's Easter holidays, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get out. She might let me nip out for an hour, so this might come sooner rather than later. Um, but the week after next, second week of um, half term, I've got a week off work with the kids. Now James has got no interest in fishing whatsoever. But Jessica will probably come and sit on the beach somewhere and have a little go. I fancy getting down to shore and having a go for the place if I can talk her into it. So that could be on the cards. Um, but whatever happens, I'll bring the camera along and I'll show you guys. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Enjoy the rest of your Good Friday. Um, have a lovely weekend. And we'll be back soon with some rods in hands and some fish. Take care.